In Mido 16.0, we've introduced new tools that allow you to work smarter, not harder. With tools like the Procedural Bridge, it's now easier than ever before to work flexibly and continuously iterate on your work, while tools like the Primitive Slice allow you to add and remove geometry from meshes quickly. Conditional loop selection tools introduced in this release also now allow you to have unparalleled precision when making selections. In addition to the excellent new features, we've also introduced the Wrap Effector, a powerful procedural tool that allows you to deform dense meshes with a low poly cage and a procedural version of the Edge Subdivide tool, which was introduced in Modo 15.2. Now that we know what's new, let's take an up close look at these new features. Let's kick things off with the enhancements made to the Primitive Slice tool. The first of two updates to Modo's direct modeling toolset the Primitive Slice was initially introduced in Modo 15.2 and has received a few upgrades to this release. The Primitive Slice tool allows you to easily add or remove geometry from your meshes through shapes or content presets. Using the Primitive Slice couldn't be easier. Simply navigate to the Edit tab and activate the Primitive Slice tool. Once activated, you can assign a shape or profile preset to the slice. Shapes can be applied by simply changing the type in the drop down to one of the shapes listed, while content presets can be applied by changing the type to preset and then selecting a preset from the profile submenu. Clicking the menu at the top of the presets browser gives you access to various shapes, profiles and curves. After assigning a shape or a profile preset, click and drag on your mesh in the viewport. Once the shape is present on your mesh, press space on your keyboard to open the Tool Properties window. From here, you can change the operation type. There are multiple operations within the Primitive Slice that allow you to add or remove geometry, such as Add, Subtract, Tunnel and Intersect. You can also use the tool to create additional edges on a mesh by selecting Stencil or Slice. Once applied to your mesh, you can continue to adjust settings such as scale and position by using the handles in the viewport or their respective parameters in the Tool Properties menu. In Modo 16.0, we've also introduced the ability to rotate your shapes through heading and bank settings. These parameters can be adjusted directly in the Tool Properties window or can be changed in the viewport by enabling Show Rotate Handles, giving you total control over the look of your sizes. When working with operations such as subtract or add, new options found in the tool properties menu such as set positive depth allow you to automatically determine the best positive depth to cut through a mesh, while preview geometry enables you to turn a preview of the geometry driving the cut or addition on or off, eliminating any guesswork so you can be confident that you're modelling with precision. Using content presets with the primitive slice tool has also become easier. Previously, when using profiles that contained open edges, only curved edges would be added or removed while parallel edges were ignored. Now you're able to extend the edges of your presets by adjusting the Extend Open Edges parameter under the Profile Attribute submenu. The next new tool in the Direct Modeling toolset are some new additions to Modo's powerful selection tools. Selection, in general, has always been integral to Modo and its modeling tools from selection sets to procedural selection options. In this release, we're striving to make selection easier than ever before with the introduction of two new tools, Conditional Loop and its command version, Conditional Loop Tool. Conditional Loop allows you to select edge loops that the normal method of double clicking may not be able to select. For example, take a look at this mesh. We have an edge loop that goes around both the holes in the mesh and the gap in between them. Normally, to select that edge loop, we would need to select everything individually. But with the conditional loop, all we need to do is select a single edge along that edge loop, and then the conditional loop will do the rest of the work for us. So to use this tool, I'm going to select an edge along the edge loop and then navigate to the selection tab and activate the conditional loop. The entire edge loop is now selected with minimal effort on our part. So, the second part of the new selection tools that we've introduced is the Conditional Loop Tool. This tool allows us to define a start and end point for a selection. Sometimes, you may want to only select the edges confined within or outside of a selected edge loop. So if I select this edge loop, I can then use the Conditional Loop Tool to only select the edges inside. To do this, with a closed loop selected, navigate to the Select tab and activate the Conditional Loop Tool. 
When the tool is activated, you can then select an edge. Once selected, the tool will automatically select any adjacent edge loops until we hit the edge loops that were initially selected when the tool was activated. Moving on to some of the new procedural features introduced in this release, let's take a look at the Bridge Mesh Op. Like its direct modelling counterpart, the bridge allows you to select separate faces or curves and then generate geometry between them. However, unlike its direct modelling counterpart, the bridge mesh op can continually be edited even after additional mesh ops are applied over it, allowing you to work flexibly. To apply the bridge mesh op, select the faces or curves that you want to bridge between. Once selected, open the Mesh Operations viewport by clicking the icon to the left of the items tree. Once opened, click Add Operator and type in Bridge. Once the Bridge Mesh Op appears, press Enter on your keyboard to apply the Mesh Op. We now have a bridge between our selected meshes. Because we bridged in two places at once, we have some weird geometry going on. To fix this, turn off Continuous Bridge. The Bridge Mesh Op has all the same features as its direct modelling counterpart, so you're still able to utilise parameters such as segment and twist. As mentioned earlier, because this tool is procedural, it remains editable even after it's applied. So if I add a few Mesh Ops to my stack and decide that I want to change how many segments are on my bridge, all I need to do is select the Bridge Mesh Op in the Mesh Op list and change the segment parameter and the changes will be passed up the mesh op stack. I can then go back and change the amount of segments again if I need to, without having to worry about rebuilding my mesh if I want to make major changes. As with the direct modeling tool, you can use content presets with the bridge mesh op. To use content presets with the bridge mesh op, expand the mesh op in the mesh ops viewport by clicking on the arrow next to its name. Once expanded, expand the tool pipe and click add to tool pipe. In the window that appears, type in Content Preset and press Enter on your keyboard. Once applied, you can choose from a number of profiles and shapes to create interesting silhouettes for your bridge. Another really cool procedural tool that we've introduced in this release is the Wrap Effector. The Wrap Effector makes the deformation of dense meshes easy and is perfect for animation and modelling. There are two ways that we can set up a Wrap Effector. The first is to have two versions of the mesh that you want to deform, one high poly and the other low poly. The low poly mesh will act as a cage for the high poly and can then be used for deformation. To set up the wrap effector, open the schematic viewport by clicking the schematic viewport button at the bottom of your 3D viewport. Once opened, select both the high poly and the low poly meshes in the items tree and then click the add selected button so that you can access them in the schematic viewport. Once both are accessible in the schematic viewport, click the add button and add a wrap effector. Once added, you will have two wrap effector nodes and both your geometry available to you. Leave the high poly mesh plugged into the geometry connection in the mesh wrap effector full mesh node, but make a connection between your low poly mesh and the mesh wrap effector node. Once connected, you can manipulate your low poly mesh and see the results on the high poly. Another way of using the wrap effector is to disconnect the low poly mesh and then in the properties tab for the mesh wrap effector node, click the create wrap mesh button. In the pop-up that appears, specify how many spans you want your bounding box to have in each axis and then press OK. You can now use the wrap mesh produced to deform your mesh. Using settings such as remap weights and shear compensate allow you to have finer control over your deformations. The last tool that we're going to look at in this video is the new Edge Subdivide Mesh Op. The direct modelling version of this tool was introduced in Modo 15.2 and in this release it now has a procedural counterpart. Edge Subdivide allows you to split edges into two or more chunks, making it perfect for retopology or adjusting your edge flow. To use this tool, select the edge that you want to split and open the Mesh Operations window. 
With the edge selected, add an edge subdivide mesh up using the Add Operations button. Once applied, you can adjust the number of vertices added to the subdivided edge using the Properties panel. Vertices created with the edge subdivide can also be repositioned along the edge by combining the operation with an array. To do this, drag the subdivide mesh up into the schematic viewport and then create a string to array. Once available in the schematic viewport, create a connection between the string to array and the array channel in the edge subdivide node. Once connected, add a value to the string channel in the properties tab of the string to array node. That's all the features that we'll be looking at today. We really hope that you enjoy these cool new features in Modo. For more information, including documentation, the user guide and additional tutorials, head over to learn.foundry.com forward slash modo.